Hi, I'm PJ Matavish, and uh, welcome back to another DCG tutorial. Uh, this one we're doing the geology geometry question from section C of the 2016 paper, or as it should be called, Pool Masters. All right, so as you see there, they've changed from the norm of having a road, car parks, and so on, to um, a pool in a garden. So you're basically landscaping. All right. So as I said in my review in the previous video. Uh, what might have caught you out is the scale. So everyone up to now has been 1 to 1000, which meant every metre was represented by 1 mil. Now it's, it says there at the bottom of the question as well, MB scale 1 is to 100. So every metre is represented by 10 mil now. All right, and it even says in the question, I'll read through it. So the company map located on the back of uh, section A shows a plan of a garden with a swimming pool similar to that in the image on the right. The ground contours at 1 metre uh, vertical intervals. Okay, so the ground contours are one meter, as you see here, and they've highlighted that. See, they've put in bold for a reason. On the map A, B, C, D is the edge of the pool, and it's level at an altitude of five meters. So A, B, C, D, and they've done A, B for you. Note the earthworks between A and B have already been completed for you. Now they've changed the rules in the, in the sake that they've changed the scale, changed the uh, background of the question. But as you look here, they've made it slightly easier for you as well. So part um. B. Why have they even? Oh yeah. So use using side slopes of one to one for both the cutting and the embankments. Uh, show the earthworks necessary to ac uh, accommodate the eastern edge of the pool. So that is this edge here of the pool. So they told you the cutting and so the cuts and the fills are both one to one. So you don't have to mess around with ten mil and fifteen mil. All right. So let's start our earthworks here from B to C. Don't have to worry about is it lower or higher. We're just going to go straight into putting in our ten mil and figuring out after that. So this here they've given you this straight line out from the radius so I'm going to mark my 10 mils on that. It's a curve so therefore we have to draw contours in as curves as well and the center is at O so put this pin of the compass at O lead at your uh, new contour and swing it around. And I'll fast forward through this. So first thing to note is the edge is level at 5 meters. So here you have a point of 5 meters. Follow the 5 contour, you have another point here. This is also at 5 meters. And then D is at 5 meters as well. After that then we've got to figure out then is the land falling away from it or rising. Okay, and you see here, this is 5 meters. And everything else after that is lower. 4, 3, 2 and so on. So that means these are going to be fills. All right? But it doesn't matter because they're both 1 and so on. So all that matters is... Your first contour line here isn't going to represent 6 after 5, it's going to go down. So this is going to be 4 meters, 3 meters, 2, and so on. So we didn't need that last one. So I'm going to mark these in. This is the contour line for 4, so follow 4 down to the cross, which is here. And also you have another one on the far side on the first line here. And so on. Okay, so we'll mark them in for 3 and 2, and I'll fast forward. Okay, so that's the artworks put in from B to C. Now, the last two points here were on uh, the two line, or the two contour, two meter contour, and there was no one meter, so you put in a curve, remember, always a curve, you don't just go straight lines, all right? Next section, so we're going from C to D now. So let's draw down those contours. That straight line here is handy, we'll just draw them down. You see here the ground, so this is 5 metres, this is 5 metres, and the next contour is 6, 7, 8, and 9. So now we're rising, okay? So that means these 10 mils represent um, different measurements to the ones we used previously. So for this one, there's 4, 3, 2. Now we're going up. So this is 5, so the next one is 6, 7, 8, and 9. So where they cross, you're given contours that give you your point. So we see here, this is a 6 contour on the first line here, so this is a point. And same thing on follow six around on the back here. Okay, so do the ones for seven, eight, nine, I'll fast forward. Okay, so that is your earthwork for the section from C to D. Okay, so 
as I said before, they made it kind of straightforward enough when it comes to the cutting and the or the fills. You don't have to figure out too much. They're all there, ten mils. Okay, and that's that section. So let's move on. That was part A. So now part B. So D is the edge of the sloping pathway, which we have here, going away from the pool. At D, the pathway is altitude of five meters and it falls uniformly to an altitude of four meters at E. Using the same side slopes as above. Show the earthworks cuttings necessary to accommodate the northern edge of the pathway. So we're moving down to four meters down here. So that means our slopes are going to be sloping away from D, and we're going to have our cone placed here at E. Okay, so the plan is the cone, the same as the cone at E. The radius is like in previous questions, either five mil or seven point five, according to your question but cuttings in this one they're one is to one which is your 10 mil so if we get 10 mil on our compass do a radius 10 mil circle at uh, e now we draw a tangent back to d to get the angle of the slope okay so that's our angle so let's go perpendicular from that mark in so we have maybe four contours uh, all 10 mil apart and draw on the angles. I'll we'll fast forward to this. Okay, so there are angles put in for our contours. Okay, so one, two, three, four. So the first one is representing your five meters and we already have a point on five. Second one is representing the six meter contour. So this is the second one here. So we're cuts to six meters. This here and here. Next is seven and so on. So we put them in and we'll draw it in strong. Okay, and then we go off to the edge of the sheet here where it cut the five meter contour again. So that is part uh, B, the question done. So we put our cone down here at E, got our angle with the tangent back to D, did out our 10 mils because the cutting and fills were the same. Distance with one is to one, and each time they met, uh, crossed the contour gave us our points and just joined them in like normal. Uh, part C now, so the southern end, now let's go here. So the southern end, the floor slab of the pool is sloping and is of uniform thickness. That's important to note. Uh, R and S are two points on the floor and their altitudes are four and three meters respectively. A vertical borehole at S reveals the bottom surface of the uh, pool floor slab at an altitude of 1.5 meters. And the strike of the floor is north 55 degrees east as indicated by line L. Determine the dip and the thickness of the floor slab. So what we need to do is you have Your line here from R to S at the top of the slab You drill down vertically uh, through S and at a height of 1.5 meters you hit the bottom of the slab So what we need to do in the strike is this L line here So we need to do an auxiliary. This is the plan of it. We need to do an auxiliary elevation of points R and S and the bottom of the slab along your strike here. The strike is going to give you the um, true shape of it. Okay, so there's 55 degrees. Okay, so I'm putting, on my, I'm putting my XYU line directly at S there to save me a bit of room. So we're doing auxiliary elevation, uh, okay, and this is the plan. So normally you get your heights from the elevation, in this case there is no elevation, but they told you the heights of the points. Point R is at 4 metres, point S is at uh, 3 metres. So if we use our XY line as our ground line, as our zero contour, measure up 4 metres, measure up 3 metres, give you a line and also put in the bottom of the slab, okay, which was down 1.5 metres.
Okay, so there's my auxiliary elevation of the line RS. R1 is at 4 meters above the XY line, so i.e. 14 mil, because each meter is represented by 10 mil. Point S1 is above 3 mil. Now, this X1, Y1 could be in place out here, out the way, and that's probably why they left loads of room there for you. I told them I fit it in here within the pool, so it's kind of overlapping my ground contours, but it doesn't make any difference as long as it's done right. So that is the top of the slab, okay? And you drill down 1.5 meters and you found the bottom of the slab, which is I'm indicating here at point T. Now, it's important to note that it started the question and said that it was a uniform thickness. So that means the distance from the RS line will be the same distance down to uh, the bottom of the slab, i.e. the same angle. So if we get the angle of RS projected from this point T back here, we'll get the thickness of the slab as well. Okay, so this was the vertical borehole down to point T. It's uniform thickness, so it means it's the same thickness all along. So by projecting back that uh, that line back parallel to line R1, S1, you're given the slab. Why have I put in this perpendicular line? It told you to indicate the thickness of it. So to find the thickness of it, it's not 1.5 meters because that's a vertical borehole through it. You need to go perpendicular to it to get true length. So if we measure this distance here, it'll indicate the length. So I'm measuring roughly 14 mil, so your distance is 1.4 meters. Okay, give or take our aperture with the parallel lines. And lastly, it says the dip as well. So the dip is just your angle. So it said determine the dip and thickness of the floor step. Now I didn't say indicate, so I didn't say to show it, but I still measure it all the same, so roughly around 9, 10 degrees, okay? So the dip is the angle your slab is making to the X1, Y1. I just put in a datum line there just to bring it up to put it against the bottom of the slab. And the thickness then isn't 1.5 meters because that's not a true length. You have to go perpendicular from the edge and I got 1.4 meters. So give or take a mil or two, depending on how accurate you are with the pens or with your pencils and maybe the thickness of the pen here is making it a bit bigger and so on. But that's how you find uh, part C. And then part D, again, straightforward enough part. Uh, these are the four, um, so there are four entrance steps to the pool as shown. The top step is level and altitude of 4.8 meters. Uh, and the space provided draw the vertical section, i.e. the profile, through the steps of the and the floor slab along the line PS. Okay, show the steps uh, to be equal height. And note the top step PQ has already been drawn for you and is represented by P1, Q1 in the section view. So they want you to draw uh, the view of the line, or view, or the section view of the PS line. All right. So we have P1 and Q1 put in already and they are at altitudes of 4.8 meters. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to project up the points R and S. Now this time we're not working from a ground line up with our heights, we're walk working from a height down. So we know R to be at 4 meters, we know S to be at 3 meters. So if this is Q is at 4.8 meters, measure down 8 mil, it'll give you 4 meters and then another 10 mil to give you uh, 3 meters. So 4 meters is the height of point R, so this is R1 and 3 meters is a height of point S. I know that's just the slope of the pool, so let's join R to S, R1 to S1. Lastly then is the steps. You see here you have the edges along that section, bring them up. And it said they're of equal height, so you have one, two, three steps. Alright, and you have a height there of 0.8 mil. Okay, so divide that up into three. Not going to work out too well, so we're going to divide the line in equal parts. So a little recap on that. The fills and the cuts were both 10 mil, because it was one to one. It was 10 millimeters because each meter was represented by 10 mil, so each one of these contours is going up and down in meters. Okay, so we had fill and cut 
and then are cut here into the hill for the path that's sloping down to E. Part C then was the uh, dip and thickness over here. Now it said, again it said indicate, or it said determine, it didn't say indicate, so I'm sure if you put in like the distance there and not write it in, you get the mark as well. And then just a section view of the line P to S. Okay. So with this question we don't have the marking scheme to put up at the end of the video to compare and as I tell my own students I'm not too familiar with uh, road geometry but I'm pretty sure that's uh, spot on. Or let me know in the comment section below what you think of it. Uh, did you do something similar yourself and did the exam does it look similar does it look uh, the same as what you did hopefully it does and if it does help leave a like and we'll see you in the next one.